What's up, MySpace? Welcome back to Ground Zero Salem. It's your host, Pat. It is hot as balls down here. Uh, I cannot wait until the fall is here when I get my month or so of it actually being comfortable in my little man cave. Uh, not humid. Thankfully, none of the collection is in danger. I have this nifty uh, dehumidifier that I pulled the trigger on a couple of weeks ago. Well worth it. Definitely feels better. But if you haven't noticed from the last couple of videos, I have been kind of sweaty. I apologize. I'll be uh, wiping the brow probably frequently. We're listening to some Spirit Caravan right now. Rocking out to a little wino in this oppressive heat outside. So, wanted to talk about some reissues. I've gotten a bunch. Dark Descent had a sale, I want to say two months ago, something like that. And I picked up a few other things here and there. So a lot of good stuff that's come out past couple of years. A few things that came out this year I wanted to show off, tell you guys about, see what you think about these. Kick it off with Pandemonium from Poland. This is a Crypt reissue that came out in 2000, 2017. Originally came out in, recorded in 93, came out in 94 it looks like. Got Pazuzu on the back there. Beautiful gatefold. And it came out on this gorgeous clear vinyl. Who knew that lack of color could be gorgeous, but it is. Great sounding record, originally came out on cassette, it looks like. Fucking fantastic. Uh, kind of genre defying. It has a certain uh, mid-tempo, occult, sort of cryptic feel, like maybe Sam Ale a little bit, um, Blood Ritual era. Uh, a few other comparisons, maybe, um, but it's really its own thing. Uh, vocals are kind of death metal-ish. Some of the riffs remind me of doomy candle mass kind of stuff, like Ancient Dreams a little bit. Some of it's kind of slowed down thrash riffs. None of the riffs get too complicated, all very stick in your gums, kind of catchy, good shit. There's uh, tasteful keyboards all over it, some good violins. Uh, all done, not overdone, not overpowering the main riffs and the main music. It's very straightforward march, mid-tempo, just great solid metal from Poland. I came across the demo uh, last year in that big tape trade I did with Mario, and uh, I wanted to hear the full length. The demo is great as well. I think Devilry is the name of it. I'm going to double check that and delete it out of here if it isn't. Then we got Cabal's Midian. This is a brutal thrash record featuring none other than Killjoy from Necrophagia, R.I.P. This was re-released in 1919. 19, this was recorded in 1990 at Morris Sound Studios. I don't know how I never heard of it until it was reissued in 2015, but it's fucking awesome. Um, unlike a lot of other really intense, brutal thrash kind of bands like Demolition Hammer or Epidemic or bands like that, there's um, Sadist. It, it kind of evokes a lot more, a lot more mood, a lot more atmosphere. Um, there's subtle use of like some synths and keyboards on it on some of the slower songs. The slower songs almost have sort of a Hello Waits kind of thing going on. Vocal delivery is uh, pretty deep, but not growling death metal. Um, close to it, very understandable vocals and lyrics. And the fast, when they go fast, there's blasting. It's just a great fucking recording. Fantastic fucking record. Black vinyl. There's a poster. Won't show you either. That's all you get. But, uh, fucking really, really, really good. This has been sitting in Dark Descent's distro for, I mean, since it came out in 2015. They're really cheap. I don't know why more people haven't hopped on this. A few people have talked about it on YouTube. I know Eric has maybe one or two other people I can't think of but completely worth your time, this Cabal record. And of course, you can't go wrong with the Clive Barker theme, uh, Nightbreed. Great movie, great book. Was obsessed with it in high school, so. Nice to see subject matter that kinda goes a little bit outside the norm with that kind of stuff for a theme. Then I got these Punch and Stench reissues. I got the first three, the uh, first recordings. For God your soul, for me your flesh, and Ben caught buttering. Looks like it was on uh, Dissonance Productions. Dissonance Productions. How is that supposed to be pronounced? 
God, I'm a dumbass. Um, for CD, vinyl, back on black. Uh, you know, honestly, back on black's track record's been a lot better lately. Uh, I, I have a few recent things that they did. It sounds pretty good, but a lot of times lately, I just can't justify a vinyl, a vinyl purchase. It's just too expensive, you know, unless something's on sale. I usually go for the sales. I'm looking for the buys. You know, just like Filene's Basement for fucking metal vinyl. But, first disc. This includes the split with Disharmonic Orchestra. Their first EP. His name escapes me right now. And their demo. With some live bonuses that I don't really care about. They were pretty much a straight up grind band at this point. Um, a lot of similarities to early Napalm Death. Got that great single foot blasting that I've been harping on lately. That I happen to love. Uh, even, even so, there's some weirdness creeping in there already. There's like this weird slap bass part thrown in the middle of a song for no reason. Uh, vocally, they're a little bit more towards the death metal realm, I'd say. Um, classic band, and I do mean classic band, underrated. I always would see ads for these guys. They'd appear on comps, and it just was always a, a sign to me that early relapse from the early 90s and Nuclear Blast when they were kind of conjoined really were pushing the envelope with stuff that was a little different and a little bit more um, fucking wacky in a good way. You know, these guys and Righteous Pigs and a host of others was a big reason for me wanting to check out that label, dig a little bit deeper. So then we got a two-disc version of For God Your Soul, For Me Your Flesh. Fucking great. Two discs there. The two discs, there's the original version. Uh, recorded in 89 or 90 and then it got remixed remastered and partially re-recorded in 1993 um, I like both for different reasons again bunch of live stuff actually and they're such a competent live band that if it's a situation where the disc is just playing in the background while you're cleaning your house or whatever like I like to do um, the songs sound good you know it's, it, it's the live tracks aren't bad you know usually I'm, I'm not a fan but I don't mind these so much. Uh, this is when they start to get a little bit more weird. Slow things down in the right parts. Um, get a little bit more riffy, a little bit more memorable. Get a lot sicker. You know, they're obviously kind of taking some crib notes from Carcass a bunch, even early on on the first recordings. Uh, pulsating, protoplasma, you know, songs like that. Festered offals. Um, they continue down this path on this and get m even more twisted. Just a bunch of Austrian sickos. Gotta love the Joel Peter Witkin cover art. He was uh, an artist, 70s, 80s era, I think, that somehow pulled off doing actual art with um, cadavers, real cadavers, photography. Um, excellent early death metal stuff. Definitely carving their own niche between what was going on in all these different scenes and countries. Um, holding it down for Austria, if you will. There was a certain buzzsaw, kind of grindy guitar tone, but it wasn't like any other bands. You know, they got these really gross grooves that in any other context, like for their slower riffs, which seem kind of cheesy. In a lot of ways, they kind of were starting to pioneer death and roll um, along with Entombed, but we're doing it in a completely different way with a lot of, a lot of gross, amongst all the, the riffing death metal and blasting and one two beats and everything when they when they slowed it down which they started to a lot more on Ben Caught Buttering um, they just had th these great memorable riffs and um, something about them was just kind of unsettling uh, personally I never you know I, I kind of bob my head like yeah it's a good fucking riff but I'm also kind of like Ugh, it, it's placed weird it makes me feel weird it makes me feel funny next up Ben Caught Buttering uh, another Witkin piece. Uh, this is actually the one guy's head. Same dude, split in half and turned that way. Fun fact. Came out, I think, I don't know, sometime in the early 90s. I think 91. Yeah, it says here 91. Recorded in 91, might not have come out till 92. But all on the same label. This is really a lot of people's favorite record for a reason. For me, it's kind of a toss-up between this and For God Your Soul. Like I said, they really fleshed out a lot more songwriting on this. Uh, Happy on Birthday, great song. Drunken and Mumfied Bitch. 
Oh, man, there's just... Every track on here is pretty much a winner. Cannot go wrong with this stuff. Um, rock and roll, grind, punk rock, utter depravity and sickness. Fucking great stuff. Some more Crypt reissues. Some unknown bands to me. Usually my method with these, as I think I've mentioned, I'm gonna give myself a forehead wipe here. Get rid of that sheen. Like I've mentioned, I like going on uh, whenever they have a sale and just kind of going on reading the description. And I trust that if I pull the trigger, if I like the, the uh, description, that it's gonna be something I like and hasn't gone wrong once yet. So this is Cruciform. This is uh, an unbeknownst to me until now, Australian band that leans towards the uh, death doom kind of genre. Atavism and Paradox. Atavism was an EP, Paradox was a demo. Um, it's nestled very comfortably along with, uh, I'd say sound-wise, along with the usual suspects, My Dying Bride, uh, Paradise Lost, particularly the demos, even the early Morgion stuff, the demo material. Very bleak, very heavy. The EP doesn't really lean on much other than the uh, strength of the, the songwriting and the riffs. There's not really a lot of nuance or any additional instrumentation. Um, they do use a significant amount of keyboards on the demo, and for that reason, I kind of like the demo more, although the EP is very, very powerful. Very, very uh, forlorn. It's got less of a gothic kind of thing than uh, all the Peaceville bands that I mentioned but it's still uh, desperate and sad as fuck. Um, extremely low-end and brutal. According to what I read, this came out around, around the same time as uh, Turn Loose the Swans. So, you know, the original purveyors of this sound were starting to go off in a different direction. These guys seem to be holding it down. Uh, they called it a day not too long after the EP came out, it looks like. Uh, but like I said, the demo demo is really, really good. The Paradox demo. You see that there? That does have like a significant amount of synths and keyboards on it. There's uh, a fucking excellent song, To the Heavens I Shall Lift My Eyes. And that's the that's the jam from this. Put a link to that song. Typical great Crypt treatment. Huge lyric sheet. Little band history, some flyers. Cool. Then we've got Superation with the Cube. Uh, really, really cool sci-fi tinged, well, more than tinged, sci-fi themed French death metal. I believe this is uh, 93 or 94. Another re-released on the Crypt. Came out a year or two ago. Two discs. One disc with the original album. Second disc with live stuff. Haven't really tore into the live stuff yet. But wow, um, yet another band that I saw descriptions for, advertised in the old photocopied Relapse Records catalog way back when. And uh, judging by the name, it sounded kind of medical grindy to me. Not the deal at all. Um, you could take cues from maybe Anacrusis, Voivod, uh, Fear Factory's very first album, that kind of stuff. There's uh, a good amount of guttural, growling, death metal vocals, um, but there's also a lot of clean vocals, a certain kind of weird, almost psychedelic, uh, Voivod-ish um, guitar approach that's really, really cool. A lot of echoing, repeating guitars for the leads. Um, very, very, just gets your attention and kind of holds it for the whole record. I like this a lot. Um, produced very well. Again, referencing movies, they're talking about the, the Canadian film, The Cube, and uh, it's definitely got sort of a sci-fi horror vi vibe to it. This is a big one for me. Disincarnate, Dreams of the Carrion Kind. It was a bitch finally getting this. I ordered it off of Amazon, never made it to my door. Something got lost in transit. I got refunded, ordered it from another seller. Been waiting to crack this open for like two or three months now. Finally arrived. This is James Murphy, death metal journeyman, guitarist's band. Played on Leprosy, played on Cause of Death, played on Death Shall Rise by Cancer, played with Testament for a while, some other notable things. 
This is his solo project, and I like it better than anything else he did with any of those other bands. I like this pure vision of what he wanted to do in terms of playing death metal. Um, very fucking heavy for its time. A lot more streamlined and straightforward, but there's a lot of stuff it reminds me of, um, most of which are bands from New York that end in uh, Asian. That gives you any kind of idea. Also, a little bit of kind of early Gorguts and maybe Cryptopsy. If you want to give you a pure FFO bullshit line about it. Great, heavy, complex death metal, but the dude knows how to write a song and how to structure riffs, and it's very evident in this. Um, Stench of Paradise Burning was a fucking hot track for me. I heard it on the At Death's Door 2 compilation, and from that, I was like, when is that fucking record came coming out? And it finally did back in, I think this was 94, perhaps 93. And this was like the end of me being excited about death metal. I think this was the last death metal full length that I was really hyped on as a kid. But it uh, is fucking great. If you like American death metal, it's a bit on the technical side, but not overdoing it. Uh, that's a bit on the brutal side, but not overdoing it. Just very fucking tasteful. I think that's the, the takeaway from this. I believe that's Dave McKeon of the Sandman comics uh, cover art there too, which is very indicative of the whole 90s thing. It comes with a little booklet, um, just with lyrics it looks like. Thanks list. Yep, Dave McKeon right there. Called it, nailed it. But yeah, if you're looking to dig into some uh, death metal from the 90s, not a lot of people talk about Disincarnate, I feel like, and it's certainly worth your time. I mean goes without saying that James Murphy was a hell of a guitarist, a talented guy. Then we've got Excruciation from Switzerland, Last Judgment, also including uh, some demos. This was a Swiss band, fucking great Swiss band. And the, listening to the Last Judgment EP that's on here, there's so much going on. Before I get into that, I just want to note, I don't know if these guys toured with them and it was that kind of deal, but look. We got, see right there, two DRI shirts, a Corrosion Conformity shirt, and a Wehrmacht shirt. All white shirts. It's wonderful. <laughs> Nothing screams late 80s crossover thrash than that. Uh, not that this is anything remotely crossover thrash. Um, it reminds me of a lot of great stuff. It has a certain Swiss kind of vibe to it. Um, Vocal delivery, at least on the full length, or not the full length, but the uh, proper record and not the demos on here. It's definitely kind of coronerish. Uh, it's got this sort of snide, um, weird, nasally kind of delivery, like a lot of a lot of European thrash bands seem to have at the time. Uh, the rawness of it is almost kind of Hellhammer, but there's way more of a slightly tighter, palm-muted sort of speed metal thing with the riffs. It almost also has like an early proto-black metal kind of thing going on too. Uh, very noise records. It's fucking great. Uh, the demos are a little bit of a rougher listen, you know, only for the Brave of Heart there. The demos have like really weird whispered vocals. Very strange sounding. Certainly not for everybody. Then we got Terra Sphere. Um, I find it funny that this was a New England band. Looks like they were from New Hampshire, but I think they moved to Boston or something. Another Crypt issue. This was a Crypt issue as well. Um, and just with the accent and everything, Terra Sphere with an AH. This is fucking awesome. Really technical thrash, like verging on Watchtower level of like complexity to the music. Very loud, um, kind of finger picked bass. Music goes all over the place, but it's still somehow cohesive. It's got really belted out kind of um, falsetto-ish vocals, but are kind of raspy and shouting in parts as well. It's, uh, it's a fucking great listen. Um, never heard of this band. Again, probably never would have heard of them if it wasn't un unearthed by Ted. And fucking rad stuff. Very, very cool, impressive shit. Um, again, there's bonuses. I believe it includes a demo as well as the, uh, the full length. The production on it, the guitars are thinner. Almost kind of sounds like a demo. Guitars are a bit thinner and um, plenty loud enough, but it really allows the, the bassmanship to be shown off a little bit better, which I think works for it really well. 
Um, it's got a certain rawness to it that I really like. And even though it's recorded in 1991, it has way more of like a no later than like 86 kind of feel to it. Like this band might have been behind the times or something like that, or considered that at least when they were around. But what they did was something great. Maybe if they put something out in the mid 80s, I don't know if they were actually around then or not, they would have been bigger. You know, I think music was moving on to different stuff by 1991. Uh, but this has a great raw, like, 80s quality to it, despite the fact it was recorded in 91, so. Um, I'm hot as fuck. I am going to bounce and go upstairs. I'm actually looking forward to going outside and mowing my lawn, because I'm not going to be in this basement anymore. Alright, 